Welcome everybody. It is 5.05. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome. My name is Gail Green and I'm the Assistant Director here at the LSA Honors Program. I will be showing you a brief slideshow shortly, but first we'd like to do a little bit of introductions. Um, so in my role as the Assistant Director here in Honors, I do a variety of things and one of them is oversee our Honors Admissions process and welcome new students um, such as yourself to Michigan and to Honors. I also oversee um, orientation for our first year students. So you'll be hearing a little bit more from me as time goes on if you do decide to come to Michigan. I also work with um, Honors Housing and supervise the RA team that does a lot of great work bringing the community together. And I work as an advisor in the program. And so I might be assigned as the academic advisor for a few of you. We have here five um, great Honors students who represent kind of different interests um, from across the program here in LSA. So I'm going to have them each kind of introduce themselves, talk a little bit about their academic interests as well as their extracurricular interests. And then I'll move into the slideshow. After that, we're gonna open it up to Q&A. So if questions come to you as I'm going through the slideshow, or even as you, you know, see um, one of the students talk a little bit about their interests, feel free to pop those questions into the Q&A and not the chat feature. The Q&A is a little bit uh, more straightforward for a presenter to view. <clears throat> the students and I will be answering questions, um, in some cases um, by typing, in other cases live in the Q&A as we move forward. So with that, Eric, do you want to kick it off? Sure. Um, so my name is Eric. Um, I'm a senior studying neuroscience, and I'm on the pre-med track. So if you have any questions regarding that, I could try to answer any of those. Um, I'm from Troy, Michigan, which is just an hour away from Ann Arbor, and my pronouns are he, him, his. And some things that I'm a part of on campus. Um, I work part-time as an EMT down at Huron Valley Ambulance, um, do research for the surgery department at Michigan Medicine, um, which has actually allowed me to like go into like surgery to observe um, the faculty and the resident um, like interactions. Um, part of a volunteer organization called Circle K and I'm lucky to be the Hunger and Housing Committee Chair there and we get to run a lot of food drives and we get to volunteer at um, food pantries and homeless shelters and things like that. And I'm also part of the Michigan table tennis team. So that's me. Awesome. And then at least on my screen, Aditi, you're next. Hi, everyone. I'm Aditi and I'm a freshman or a first year in the LSA Honors Program. Um, I am currently undeclared, but I'm um, thinking of majoring in, MC in molecular, cellular and developmental bio. I'm also on the pre-med track like Eric. Um, on campus, I'm part of uh, a research lab in the um, that works with immunology research. I am part of a public health advocacy group called Curis, and um, I'm also on the honors student socials team. I'm also originally from Sylvania, Ohio, which is also about an hour away from here. Great. Then Jeff, you're up next. Hello, my name is Jeffrey. I'm a sophomore. Um, I'm from Grand Rapids. My pronouns are uh, he, him, his. Um, I'm studying uh, political science and programming the environment with potential minor in French. Um, and outside of honors, I am in the Michi on the Michigan Running Club and also active in the newly created Michigan Sierra Clubs with environmental advocacy interests. So. Great, and then Alyssa. Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa. I'm a sophomore studying MCDB. Um, and I'm also doing a minor in science, technology and society, um, which is a bit of a less common minor. But um, I'm originally from Watertown, South Dakota, so kind of far from here. Um, on campus, I'm also involved in the American Medical Student Association uh, Dance Marathon and Wolverine Tutors. And then I also tutor organic chemistry through the Office of Multicultural Initiatives. Great, and then Yoshi. Uh, hi, my name's Yoshi. I'm a freshman here uh, at the Honors Program and my pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, some things that I do outside oh, uh, are just, um, I, I'm in a club called MedLaunch. We work closely with people uh, with the Center of Disability. And I'm also in the TEDx design team. We just do logos, fun stuff like that. I'm also in uh, the Japanese Student Association. 
And uh, for my major, I'm undeclared, but I am planning to major in biochemistry and I'm also on the pre-med track. Unless you all think otherwise, not everybody in honors is doing pre-med. Just so happens while we have a lot of pre-med students today, you can see there's also some variation in majors and minors and things like that. Um, and that actually is, I think in some ways, a good segue to talk a little bit about the honors program. So let me just bring up a screen here. All right. So first, I'll put the um, email addresses into the chat, the websites, things like that, that we reference um, as we go forward. But just to let you know, if you do want to get some more information, if you'd like to read a little bit more about the honors program, you're welcome to do that and able to do that here at our prospective student site. We also have another website that focuses a bit more on current students, which you're welcome to read. Um, but the this uh, website, the sites.lsa.umich.edu, is really targeted more towards prospective students and has a lot of information about the application process. So what is the LSA Honors Program? Honors at Michigan within LSA is a four-year program. And I do say LSA because in order for a student to be a member of the LSA Honors Program, you have to be enrolled in a degree-seeking program in LSA, which means that we do have students who are earning degrees in other colleges, such as engineering or the Ross School of Business or music theater and dance, but they're also earning a degree here in LSA. So to be in Honors, you do have to be in LSA. But within the program, we're a four-year program, but really broken into two separate and very different phases first two years of the program. Um, it's a broad liberal arts experience. Students can engage in a variety um, of courses from across the entire LSA curriculum. This is, this is targeted much more at first and second year students. Um, and the courses that you would take as part of the lower division program are going to be honors courses, and not all of your courses will be honors courses, but a proportion of them will be, and exactly how many depends on the student and so forth. But we will ask that you take some honors courses with us. But those classes are going to be meeting distribution or college requirements that every LSA student has. So honors in the lower division isn't something that you do in addition to your usual kind of lower division uh, LSA requirements. It's a different way of meeting the distribution and college requirements that every LSA student has. We offer a variety of courses, as I mentioned. They do meet requirements such as the college's first year writing requirement, quantitative reasoning, race and ethnicity, natural sciences, social sciences, humanities, interdisciplinary um, courses. So it really runs the gamut. And we encourage students to explore and take a variety of courses, not necessarily focusing only on the area in which you intend to major, but experiment and try things out. Um, for a lot of students, this first two years is an opportunity to explore and take classes and things that your high school never offered a class in. And we really want students to approach their lower division academic experience in kind of a intellectually curious and exploratory way. To that end, we offer a core curriculum for our students. And we do require that all of our students take at least one class from this core curriculum at some point in their first two years and encourage them to take two more courses from our core curriculum beyond that. There are additional requirements if you'd like to earn our sophomore honors award that recognizes that you've um, successfully completed the lower division honors program. And if you decide you'd like to do that, you would be taking honors courses from beyond the core curriculum. We have introductory courses in a variety of departments across LSA. Um, and for a lot of students, they may take some introductory courses that through honors in their department of major or maybe they don't. Again, it's really much up to you um, in terms of which honors courses that you take, leaving aside our minimum requirements that every honors student needs to take. 
In the lower division program, we also offer advising services. So as I mentioned earlier, I am an academic advisor in the program. And so all of the, the advising staff work with students, especially in the lower division program, as they're kind of figuring things out, making college course selections for the first couple of times, talking about distribution and college requirements, and helping you figure out what major you might, might want to choose. We also do provide um, honors community experiences in large part through the honors housing option. Housing is not a requirement of the lower division program. It is an option for students in the honors program and about 75 to 80% of our incoming freshmen uh, first year students do opt to live with us in honors housing. It's located over in South Quad and we have a team of honors RAs who are upper division honors students who plan a variety of community building activities and so forth. This year, they've all been pretty much on Zoom, um, but hopefully given that we'll be approaching something closer to normal next academic year, we're hoping to do a lot more in-person programming um, through the RA team. But we also have a variety of community activities that the honors program itself puts on. Um, those things range from our Lunch with Honors series, where we bring different speakers to come in and talk with students, um, to our Honors in the Arts, Honors Cinema, Honors Book Club, which are just opportunities for people to get together and talk about interesting stuff um, that our staff puts together and kind of curates. So that's, in a nutshell, the Lower Division Honors Program. Academics, um, honors coursework, that meet the broad liberal arts requirements of the college, honors advising services, and honors community. We also offer an upper division program. This focuses much more on students in their second two years, uh, really the junior and senior year. There are two ways to complete the upper division program. One in the more common way is by declaring an honors major. Every LSA department offers an honors major. So regardless of your interest in LSA, you can do that in an honors way if you so choose. Every honors major with the exception of mathematics requires that students complete a senior thesis as kind of the capstone project of their honors major. Math instead has a series of upper division and graduate level mathematics coursework. Um, so they're a little bit different there, but everybody else, you know, every other department, students are gonna be doing research, truly independent research under the supervision of a faculty member. They'll be making a contribution to the discipline that they're studying um, in a meaningful way um, and learning the skills and kind of um, research habits that go into becoming a professional in that field. We do have a second way though of completing the upper division program and that's through our HELA program. Um, HELA stands for Honors in the Engaged Liberal Arts. And HELA isn't tied to your major. So students have a lot more flexibility and freedom with the HELA program, but it brings together coursework, typically done outside of a student's major, but sometimes related. Um, it brings that coursework together with some kind of extracurricular um, passion or interest that a student has and kind of melds them together in a project-based format. So students take classes, they learn things in a classroom setting that inform the work that they're doing, maybe out in the community or with a, um, a like program or some kind of issue or topic that they're very passionate about and bring that together in some kind of project-based format. If students complete either an honors major or a HELA project, they graduate with honors. Um, and that's kind of the culmination of the second two years of the program. Whereas in the first two years of the program, if students successfully complete um, our expectations, they earn something called the Sophomore Honors Award. Both uh, are acknowledged at honors commencement when students graduate. Um, and not all students who start with us as incoming first year students continue through all four years of the program. We also have students who start with us, um, you know, and at some point they decide, you know what, I'd rather not do a thesis or a HELA project. Um, and so they exit honors at that point. We also have students who don't start in the honors program who join us at some point later after their first term in their first year, uh, at the end of their first year, 
or later on directly through a department of major or by declaring a HELA project. Move on to the next slide that talks really about applying to honors. So there's the who, what, when, where, um, and we'll talk more about the why when we answer your questions. So who can apply? Any student admitted to LSA. What do you need to do? You need to complete two additional essays and those are available in the links here. When do I apply? Um, after you've been admitted to LSA, so any student admitted to LSA is welcome to apply to the honors program. We have dates listed. Um, two of our application deadlines have already come and gone, but we do have one more in the future. And then we have, where do I apply? Again, website is listed there. All right, so next, um, talking a little bit about our upper division program. Um, I'm gonna actually ask um, a couple of our students, can you say a little bit about some of the honors courses that you've taken? Anybody, you know, any of you all can go ahead and unmute. I can go. Um, so last semester I took the honors 240 wellness course. Um, and that was my first honors course that was, um, I believe is social science requirement. And um, it also satisfied the first year writing requirement. And I thought the course was super interesting because it sort of addressed the topic of wellness from so many different perspectives. So for example, they sort of talked about, um, you know, like um, how people conduct themselves in the workplace to like public health, to hashtag, hashtag fitspiration on social media. Um, and it was just a really, and, or for another project, we sort of looked at um, epidemiology and like COVID-19 statistics. And it was just a really cool way to sort of address this broad topic of wellness from so many different perspectives. Like, um, although it was a social science class, we still had to do like coding assignments and um, looked at epidemiology and things like that, which was really cool. Um, a current course I'm taking right now is Honors 233, and it's called What is Cancer? And it's a very interesting class because you only talk about cancer, and obviously cancer is a very broad topic. And we do approach it from a lot of different angles, like what uh, I said about uh, the wellness course. Uh, but with What is Cancer? You look at like the biology behind cancer, like how it impacts society, how there's uh, marginalized groups that can't get access to like healthcare. Um, so like this course is very like it gives you different avenues that you can dig deeper into and then it sort of gets you uh it sort of exposes you to different ideas and different um perspectives of seeing cancer and just makes you put be in other people's shoes and then um yeah if you want to learn more you can always go deeper into um the the course and you can always ask the professors and the class and especially in a zoom format it's 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 difficult i guess it's different but it's also engaging um because you also have discussion sections and um but yeah overall it is a good experience to get a general idea of what you want to get into all right thank you um so in the interest of time i'm just gonna pop ahead um as i mentioned you know honors provides advising services for all of our students all honor students are assigned an honors advisor who oversees your general LSA advising as well as honor specific kinds of things. We do also um, offer some specialized advising, particularly for students who are getting closer to graduation with regard to pre-law as well as pre-med. So we have an advisor for each of those who works with students who are thinking about following those paths. Also, as I mentioned, you know, we do offer community experiences and we have some of our pictures here um, from current times as well as before times. So you can see some of them are masked and some are unmasked and the unmasked ones are from, uh, let's see here now, that would be the fall of 2019, which seems like a very long time ago. Um, but we offer a variety of engagement activities and even for students who aren't living in honors housing, whether that be that they're not living in honors housing in their first year or in their later years, we do typically offer honors housing for second year students. Um, we're not sure at this point in time um, how much space will be available for second year students for the um, coming academic year, um, but hopefully 
and that would be academic year 2022-23 that will be able to offer more robust um, honors housing for sophomores. Um, but regardless of whether or not you're living in honors housing, students who are in honors are welcome to any of our honors housing activities. And we advertise all of our upcoming activities in our This Week in Honors newsletter. Um, we also have a group of peer mentors who work with students through our Honors 170 class, as well as students who teach our Honors 135 mini courses. Um, and that's a great way to connect with some upper division students, um, you know, beyond just social activities, but in terms of intellectual um, pursuits as well. So we do have a little bit here, honors graduation, honors commencement. We do have our own ceremony, which is typically held in Chrysler Arena. Um, and we recognize students who are graduating with honors as well as students who earned the sophomore honors award or the SHA. All right, so we're gonna move now over to the Q&A. So let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen so that you can see each of us as we talk. I see that we have a couple of questions already in the chat. Keep them coming. Um, and the first question that I see here asks about how many students, particularly first year students are in the program. Does the um, program continue beyond the freshman year? Does honors housing continue beyond the freshman year? And is there a roommate matching process? So generally speaking, we admit somewhere around 400 to 450 students um, as incoming first year students in the program. And we get typically around 2000 applications. Um, the past couple of years, it's been slightly over 2000. And um, we do admit students as current U of M students. I mentioned that earlier, but I do want to kind of reinforce this idea that you can join honors later on. And typically we have anywhere between, I would say, um, you know, 10 and 25 students join us um, every term as current U of M students, plus students who join us directly through the major. So does um, honors continue beyond the freshman year? Absolutely, it does. Um, it changes a little bit, especially as you move into the upper division program. And with regard to honors housing, as I mentioned, we do typically have um, honors housing spaces available for second year students. After the second year, we no longer provide um, the option for students to live in honors housing unless they continue with us as an honors resident advisor. Um, and we usually have 14 or 15 honors resident advisors every year. So if somebody really loves to live in housing, they'd like to take more of a leadership position, they like to build community, we would definitely encourage them to join honors as an RA. And with regard to roommate matching process, the housing application is essentially the roommate matching process, although a lot of students do go on to, um, you know, some like get to know you sites and things like that. You can request a roommate in honors housing. As long as that student is also an honor student, you'll probably be placed together. Um, if though you do select a roommate who is not a member of the honors program, you will not be placed in honors housing. You would be living elsewhere on campus with that roommate that you requested. But two honor students requesting to live together, we can absolutely make that happen. And I was wondering um, for the students who are with me today, did any of you use any of the like roommate finder tools that are out there? I ended up finding my roommate on Facebook actually. That's awesome. Um, the um, housing application does ask a lot of questions of students about their preferences and their living habits and things like that. And housing does use those to be able to <clears throat> put roommates together that hopefully have some similarities, especially in terms of their day-to-day -day habits. So the next question, do students not in honors get to do research or are those opportunities reserved for honor students? So, U of M has a lot of opportunities for students to get involved in research. And I think that, like, yeah, I see all the nodding heads here um, because so many of our students do get involved in research. 
what honors offers for upper division students typically is a different kind of research experience. There are a lot of lower division opportunities. And I'm gonna actually in a minute have the students say a little bit about how they kind of got involved in research, sort of how did they find their path. One of the most common ways is through UROP, the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program. But where honors research is different is that it really is much more independent. Um, students who are completing an honors thesis really are um, either it's their idea and their topic and they're, if you will, like, you know, in charge, driving the bus and their faculty mentor is just that, a mentor. Oftentimes in the lab sciences, that kind of independence isn't really possible because of the setup costs involved in, you know, creating a lab. But students who are working on an honors thesis are really um, in charge of a part of a larger project. And so they take on a lot more responsibility. They make a contribution in a much more meaningful way. Um, and typically that's why students don't get involved in their thesis research until a little bit later on because they've already probably gotten some skills um, and been involved in some of the more um, introductory uh, research experiences that Michigan offers. So I'm gonna turn this one over to the students though to talk a little bit, how did you kind of get involved in research? So I did the Europe program my first year. Um, and so I ended up working in a lab over in the cancer center on the medical campus. Um, and we studied like immunology and stuff. So I would say Europe is definitely gonna be the easiest way to get involved. Um, just because it's very structured and there's like an application for it. And so you have like a seminar every week or every other week. Um, and so it's like a really nice way to like ease into it if you have no experience. Like I had never been in a lab before. And so there's like a lot of guidance and like preparation. So you're not just kind of like thrown in, um, which is really nice about the program, but it is totally possible to just like look up any professor on the website. Um, and just like cold email them. And as long as you give like a brief introdu introduction, say why you'd wanna be in their lab, like most people will at least respond, um, especially with COVID, it's been a bit more difficult to do that. But yeah, you can definitely just like email people. I actually did the second option that Alyssa mentioned. So I um, started cold call or cold emailing professors um, last or like over winter break. And um, I ended up emailing many professors, some of whom didn't respond, but others of whom did. Um, and I started working in an immunology lab um, this past or this past January, which has been really great. And um, to go off from Aditi, I also tried um, cold emailing professors and stuff, and I wasn't getting too lucky with that. And for me, my path was kind of interesting because I was um, I like I was doing I was volunteering with a friend and. He was talking about how like his research lab had like a like a randomly like get it had a position open and he said like maybe I should just contact <clears throat> his PI and it just happened to you know work and I felt like I like fell backwards into research almost so it's like the opportunities to research is really endless here. All right, well, thank you all. Next question is about studying abroad. Um, Isabel says, I'm very interested in studying abroad, which is great. Um, and I'm wondering if students in honors find it harder to go abroad. Approximately how many students in honors go abroad? So the second half of your question, Isabel, I am sorry, I can't answer. And that's because we have a lot of students who go abroad and they go abroad in a lot of different ways, typically. Right now, nobody is really going abroad. Um, but I would say to ballpark it, at least at each term, 75 to 100 of our students are doing some kind of program not on Michigan's campus. So in terms of going abroad, there are, it's a lot of flexibility. There are a lot of different kinds of programs that are out there, um, depending on your interests and your goals. What do you want to get out of a study abroad program? Um, we have a couple of programs that a lot of our students have you know, attended and gone on through Michigan's um, Center for Global and Intercultural Studies, otherwise known as CGIS. 
Uh, we do have some monies available through um, uh, scholarship funds that we have specifically earmarked for honor students who would like to go abroad. Um, some of those are targeted toward particular programs, one um, at Oxford University, but we also have some funds available for students who are going abroad in different kinds of programs and experiences, sometimes related to thesis research and other times not. So it is very much possible and that would be something that for any student who is interested in going abroad, having a conversation with your academic advisor early on is a really great idea. So you can start to strategize and think about, all right, what do I want out of a study abroad experience? And what would be the best timing to do that? And how should I best prepare to make that happen? So there's another question here. Um, the size of a typical honors class, and do you have more access to professors in an honors class? So I didn't go too deep into talking about um, honors courses and things like that, but I can say that the size of honors courses varies a lot. Um, some of our honors core courses have a large lecture session, um, and they all have small discussion sections. Some of our honors core courses though are actually quite small, capping out at 36 students in lecture. But our biggest one is Great Books 191. Um, and that class has a lecture of usually around 150, 175 students or so. But all honors core course discussion sections are capped at 18 students. Um, so they'll never be bigger than 18 students. Beyond the honors core curriculum, we have small honors seminars those are usually capped at 15 to 18 students, so they're also pretty small. Um, and honors discussion sections are oftentimes smaller courses. Um, honors introductory classes are often smaller. So we have an honors introduction to psychology class, and that is capped at 20 students, whereas the general introduction to psychology class is usually around 250 or more in the lecture but all large lectures have small discussion class classes uh, that are required parts of the course overall. Um, so even if you don't take a class as an honors class, it's not going to be you know, only a large anonymous lecture section or anything like that. Um, they all have a small discussion experience as part of the course, but in honors, for example, if you take the honors discussion section for introduction to biology, the professor who's teaching the lecture leads the honors discussion section. So oftentimes, yes, you do get more faculty contact or in an honors seminar, you know, you're going to be interacting more um, in a small class setting with a faculty member. There is though one other way of taking honors courses that hasn't been mentioned yet. And that is doing what is called an honors conversion. An honors conversion is where a student takes a non-honors class and turns it into an honors class by meeting regularly with the professor throughout the term. Um, you'll also do some additional work related to the course um, and you'll do some kind of project that ties together your work with the faculty member and the work that you're doing beyond the regular course material. So I'm wondering, um, any of you students who are here, do you wanna say a little bit about a conversion experience that you've had? Yeah, I converted uh, Poli Sci 101, which is Introduction to Political Theory, and um, the honors director, Mika, was actually the professor at the time, so he had a really nice setup for where he was like really prepared with different ways that students could convert cor the course, and what I ended up doing was um, I read some ad additional material, um, and the bulk of what I read was um, The Republic by Plato, and Essentially, I just met with him a couple times throughout the semester to discuss my readings and go into it on a pretty deep level to kind of go or learn about the different nuances of the text. And it was a really great way to um, get more involved with the material and um, form a closer relationship with the professor. So. Uh, last semester, I took Public Health 200, um, and I did a conversion for that one. And basically what I did was I had to meet with my professor every week. So what I would like 
bring up news articles. He would send me news articles all the time. Um, and we would just kind of talk about um, what was going on with COVID-19. So my project was about looking at how different states have handled COVID and some of the measures that they implemented. So if there was mass mandates, um, social distancing guidelines. And so I ended up writing um, like a 15 page report or something about how this kind of progressed from really like the beginning of summer to the end of the semester. And so first of all, that was just like a really great way of, for me to like stay on top of it and just kind of be learning about the situation as it was happening. Um, and also just like getting to talk about the application of like what we're learning in class um, and how it like related to our professor's work um, and just getting to learn a bit better. Um, like you understand the course material better when you can apply it to something like a pandemic that's actually happening in the real world. Way to find the silver lining in the pandemic there, Alyssa. <laughs> All right, so I hope that was a helpful answer, Hayden. Um, another question about approximately how many small seminar honors only courses are offered each semester. And that really does vary, um, but I would say if you look at not only sort of the honors designated, like offered by the honors program seminars, but also the small kind of like honors courses out there in the college. Um, more probably, I would say eh, 40 um, courses per term when you add together the different opportunities offered for smaller course experiences in the departments. Um, we don't usually have that many honors department seminars outside of the core curriculum. I think we have two for the fall term, one on music, um, and the second one, I cannot remember the title of it right now. Uh, um, but you can look those up as well as any uh, courses actually offered by honors or another department through the LSA course guide. Um, and so that's available at the LSA website. The fall course listing is actually up right now. And so honors is a department. So you can look up those courses as well as um, there's an opportunity to in special offerings on the LSA course guide to click a box labeled honors. And that'll bring up a lot of the small introductory courses offered in the departments. Honors also does uh, publish a list of some of the more popular honors courses that are out there. So we have a question. Um, what, what are some examples of topics covered in honors seminars? And so I know a couple of our students mentioned honors courses that they've taken um, in the past. So do you all want to talk a little bit um, thinking outside of the core curriculum where there are honors courses that you took or other kind of honors classroom experiences? Students? Um, I could start. Um, I guess I'll talk about um, an honors, my honors organic chemistry class. Um, so I guess first off is like, you don't have to worry. Like I, I remember thinking about like, why did I sign up for this at first? Cause I was really worried that like, it'd be super hard or like, you know, it would affect my grade a lot. But honestly it was super fun. Like um, as people have mentioned before, you get to talk with the professor a lot one-on-one -on -one, or just like even in small groups. We, I think our group was around six to eight people. So like each week we'd meet, do extra organic chemistry questions. It would help a lot on the exam. And then for our final project, um, all of us got to make a music video together um, about like any topic that we learned in class. So I remember um, a group of my friends just like saying all of me and we like saying about like stereochemistry or something. But um, even though we didn't like win a Grammy or anything, we got to, we got gift cards. Um, to insomnia cookies, so it was pretty worth it. So I definitely recommend it and don't let it intimidate you just because it's an honors class. I don't know if this is like considered a seminar necessarily, but honors offers a like mini course. So it's like half the semester, it's called honors 170. And basically it's like an introduction to honors and all of the resources that honors has and resources at the university. And so this was probably like the most helpful thing for me in like adjusting to college um, and just like figuring out what was going on um, because there is sometimes a lot going on the first few weeks of the semester. So it was really helpful to have 
this like really small group. It was maybe 20 students. And my advisor was actually um, one of the teachers of the course. And so every week we just talked about different things from like honors resources, um, extracurriculars, how to plan your courses, like wellness. We talked about culture. We talked about personal finance, off-campus housing. It was like all these things that you need to know, but it's sometimes hard to figure out. Um, so that was like a super helpful, like really not a lot of work class, but like you got so much out of it. Going off of that, I also took Honors 170 uh, one last, last semester. And uh, it really does expose you to a lot of resources that like you've never really experienced. Cause I like, for, for me, um, I'm a, a freshman and then my parents um, are from Japan and like they don't, they didn't come to college here. So like nothing is really familiar for us. So there's a lot of different resources that you have access to, but not really compiled in one place. So taking Honors 170 really just opened up that door that you can just take different avenues, just uh, look at the different resources, the, the different opportunities that you can uh, take. And then like one of the sessions was talking about identity and that really inspired me to take a class um, like this semester about identity. So it really did, um, was an eye opener for me. And I really do recommend uh, taking that class. One thing actually I'd like uh, the students to talk about, because we do often get a lot of questions about this with regard to honors courses. Are they harder than courses that aren't honors courses. And Eric kind of alluded to this, like, don't be afraid of the honors organic chemistry thing. Um, but, you know, from, from you all's experience, how would you characterize what makes an honors course an honors course? Um, how is it different? Personally, I don't know if I'd necessarily say it's going to be harder, but you will definitely at least in my experience, learn a lot more um, than you might in other types of courses. I took, um, it was called Your Inner Ape of my first semester here, and it was a natural science course just about primate evolution. And I learned a lot more than I thought I'd ever need to know about apes. And um, it was really interesting. I was actually surprised at how much I was able to apply to things in my life. Um, I don't know if that says more about me or about <laughs> what the course was about, but um, yeah, it, it was very content heavy, but the, the instructors are there to help you succeed and they really want to see you do well. So it's not necessarily the most stressful course, but you will learn a lot in them. Um, yeah, going off of um, that, I think honest that courses um, are definitely different from regular ones because I feel like, so I guess for like neuroscience, um, like a lot of my science classes were just, I'd go in like to lecture and then just be like a lot of memorization and that'd be kind of it. We, didn't, we wouldn't really go too much in depth into like its applications and things like that. But then when I took, um, I remember uh, it was called what Westworld uh, like says about human beings essentially. And it's taught me about, I guess, consciousness and what makes us humans compared to like if we were to build an AI similar to us and it like really took me out of my comfort zone but I definitely engaged in a lot of deeper conversations that I would have ever thought I would have about philosophy and like philosophical readings that I probably would have never done outside of honors so honors classes definitely make you think more and but I don't think they're harder in a sense just because professors do really care about um you just learning um different materials and just you actually grasping the things. So I was never really worried about my grade in honors classes. Also to kind of add on that, I think the honors classes take more of a holistic approach to looking at topics rather than just kind of throwing information at you and like, here's what it is. Um, a lot of the like big part of the class is asking like why things are the way they are. Um, not just, oh, this is how it is, you should know this. Like, that we also like try to understand why things are the way they are, how they got there, um, how they can change. And so it's really just thinking about things um, from more than just a surface level. 
um, and trying to understand like reasonings behind things. I know a lot of people here are probably more, like wondering about grading of uh, these for honors these courses, like for these honors courses. And I can tell you that grades aren't really something to worry about in honors core classes because it gives you it doesn't like our grades aren't a, a stressed factor. Um, so then you can't like you don't have to break under pressure because of your grades. And then that allows you to like dig deeper, have more like wiggle room about like around what you want to learn and what you want to like go deeper into. So you can also like always talk to your professor if you if you don't like think you can keep up. Um, yeah, people are very like flexible with with your uh, like schedule and with with what you have. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't grades wouldn't be a worry because you can always go deeper into a subject and then that's what they encourage you to do. Also to sort of like echo what everyone's been saying, um, honors courses definitely like, I know that like, for example, not everyone's skilled in every subject. So people might be like wary to take an honors course in a subject they're not as familiar with. But honestly, um, especially in like honors classes, I've never, I find that they have a lot of opportunities for students to engage in the topic from different like vantage points. For example, um, my roommate is actually like completely averse to um, natural science. Like she just does not like taking natural science, feeling the requirement was a struggle for her. But she took the Anthropocene class by honors and her, she found that there were actually um, opportunities for her to engage with the topic of the environment from many different vantage points, like um, environmental law or um, things like that, that she is to allow her to sort of look at that topic from a point that she hadn't thought of before. So they just, even if you might be scared to like take an honor social science class or an honors natural science class or in a subject that you're not familiar with, they do offer a lot of opportunities for you to sort of engage with the material in a way that makes that you're passionate about or that makes you interested. Awesome, thank you. Well, we have a couple more questions and we're kind of getting near the end of our time. So I do want to make sure to answer both of these. One of the questions asks, do honors students get priority when registering for classes? And that is a qualified no. So honor students go through the same registration process as everybody else, and it's set by the number of credit hours you've earned, um, excluding AP and IB credit. So the more credits you have, the earlier you get to register. That said, when it comes to honors courses or honors sections of introductory courses, Typically, those are only open to honors. I apologize for that very noisy vehicle, uh, but those are typically only offered to honor students. So students who aren't in the honors program can't register in those honors courses or honors sections. And so honor students, you know, kind of have a little bit more, a few more options, um, more time availability, things like that, because of those um, special honors sections classes. And then our last question here in the chat asks about advice. What advice would you give for students regarding signing up for classes? I will give my advice from the advisor perspective, and then I'll have each of the students not only give advice about signing up for courses, but sort of like some parting, uh, like a parting lesson, if you will, just about their Michigan and honors experience. So with that, as an advisor, I really do encourage students when signing up for courses to approach things with an open mind. Um, really see, especially in your first year, this is an opportunity to explore. Michigan literally offers thousands of courses. And while not every single one is going to you know, be your cup of tea, be open to trying new things because we have so much richness, so many opportunities. Like dive into that course guide and run with it, see what's out there. So with that, um, let's see here now, we can go in whatever order you all would like. So wanna just unmute and signing up for classes and then kind of your, your parting words. I definitely second the idea of just like being open minded. Um, and there's obviously like Michigan offers so many classes that you just never would have had the opportunity to be exposed to in high school. So it's a really great way to sort of figure out your interests and things like that. 
but also at the same time, um, like it's okay not to sort of take everything on your plate and think that you have to take like 18 credits and um, do all the extracurricular activities. Um, it's just, you know, all about finding a balance and find, and um, that's something that you sort of will develop over time. Yeah, so when you're looking for classes, I wouldn't be afraid of a class that you don't feel super comfortable on. Like if you see a class that you don't know much about, then you like you you, you, you have that little ardor for it, but then you like you sign up. I wouldn't be afraid because there's all there's going to be another person in that same class that also that's in the same like situation as you where you don't know much about it or you don't you're not sure why you signed up. So I wouldn't be afraid to reach out to other people to like hear what their experience was with the class and also talk to your advisor too, because um, they'll guide you into the right directions and they've met like a bunch of students. Um, so they're they probably have the most like the like the best advice, like for each student and for the um, for the classes. And I would also, yeah, just reach out to upperclassmen um, and just for, I guess, the parting, parting piece of advice or something. Um, I just say like honors really, like I joined honors in a Zoom format. So like, I really never had that like in-person um, like activities and fun, like, yeah, activities. But even with a Zoom format, I've met a bunch of people. Um, I've met a bunch of friends over um, like from honors. And I'm really glad that I've like I'm here because yeah, just meeting new people is really what I like, and just being able to new, meet new people that have like the same passion of just like wanting to learn a little like a little more than like what other people like in what other classes are. I think it's a really good community. So, yeah, honors is go honors. Yeah. Um, my advice for picking courses would definitely just to be to talk to as many people as you can. Um, our advisors, especially for honors, are super great and they know like everything, but um, really asking like students who have already taken the course, they really have like the best perspective on it. And so like talking to upperclassmen, asking people what they thought, um, but also just like not always taking their word as like perfect. Um, like think about like what you know about yourself, your learning style, um, what you think about the course like reading it um on the course guide and just taking all that into consideration um also just like always talk to your advisor about it I like never know what courses I'm going to take at the beginning of the semester and I always schedule a meeting with my advisor right away and she comes up with like a huge list of these like really random and really cool courses that I would have never like looked for in the course guide um, so that's been super helpful in like fulfilling the distribution requirements um, and just like expanding your knowledge um, kind of just outside your comfort zone. And so it's not like something you should overly stress about right away um, because you really have like four years to get all of your stuff done. So try not to like overwhelm yourself at the beginning. Um, like you can space things out. You don't need to do everything right away. Um, which is something my advisor tells me every semester because <laughs> I always try to do that. Um, but my last piece of advice, I guess, about honors um, is that it's really just something additional that you get on top of every other Michigan experience you can think about. Um, so a lot of students before have asked um, if it's like, if you're in honors, if you're like only do honors things, and that's definitely not the case at all. It's not in any way isolating you um, to a specific group of people or specific um, activities or anything. You really do have everything that Michigan has to offer in addition to the things you get from honors. So don't be worried that like you aren't gonna get the full Michigan experience if you do honors because you really will get that and so much more. Yeah, similar to what like everyone else has been saying, I would say like, just have fun with it, even just the scheduling process. Um, for me personally, I get excited when the course guide comes out every semester. Um, I'm st in my fourth term here, but I still like, when I'm perusing the different course options available, I'm just amazed at the different things I can um, be learning about if they fit into my schedule. That's the biggest difficulty for me at this point, making things 
work out but yeah you can you can take so many different things and don't be afraid to like people have been saying take something that you're not certain about because you might especially early on in your career you might um find that something different interests you and you want to pursue that further and so you have plenty of time to you know focus on certain things so earlier on is really the time to try to figure out what it is that you want if you're not completely certain and even if you think you are certain it's good to expand a little bit and that's kind of what honors is trying to do by having um like different um the core courses and things like that they want you to branch out from uh the path you think you're set on so that you can really learn more about the world around you and things like that um yeah i'd like to echo what everyone else said already and i guess i'd like to add on um that if you can um try to avoid 8 a.m classes um i considered myself an early bird but um, like coming from high school, you know, waking up at 6 a.m. every day. Um, but yeah, if you can try to avoid that. Um, but even if you can't, um, some professors let you go to different lecture sections. So you can always email them about that. Um, if you're on the wait list, don't worry about it. Um, I know like a ton of my friends have been on a lot of wait lists and usually you get into the class, no problem. And even if you can't take it that year um, or just like that semester, you always get another chance next semester. So don't worry about that. And I guess, yeah, coming in, I was like thinking like, oh, yeah, I want to like graduate, you know, like early or something. I want to take like 18 credits my first semester, like I can handle it. Um, yes, yeah, I'm so happy I didn't like follow through with that. Um, I only took 14 credits. Um, I took time um, to like try to adjust to college, um, at least, you know, try to enjoy myself, try to get like new friend groups going, things like that before just trying to like, worry about like speeding through college, you know. Um, so take it slow. Um, Michigan offers a lot, as everyone said. And I guess last parting advice um, is, I guess I want to echo what Alyssa said, um, like being honors doesn't mean you'll just be studying all day. Um, everyone like, you know, you'll go to a lot of clubs together. Um, you go to dining all together. Like there's also like a pool table downstairs at South Quad when I was there and you can watch movies together down there as well. So like people do chill, you know, it's not just, <laughs> we're not just in the study lounge all day. So honors does give you that experience um, deeper, richer experience with classes, but also because it builds such a strong friend group, like even since day one, like they had games going in the basement at South Quad, and um, now they have to make friends like instantly. So um, they really, like the social aspect is definitely there as well. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Shannon dropped links um, in the chat. So we look forward, if you haven't already applied, um, to seeing your application. If you have already applied, uh, we look forward to sending you a decision or seeing you uh, joining us this summer. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>